Yeah, so hi. Um, so Niels and I began this project about, I don't know, three quarters of a year ago to try to improve the culture of the Debian Mentors mailing list. And mostly I'm just going to talk about what we did and why. And afterwards in Q&A, I can talk a bit more about how it applies to other projects or what we were inspired by. So uh, first, uh, hopefully you all know what you've gotten yourself into um, by coming here. If you want to reach me, you should email me as ashish at ashish.org, or I'm Paul Proteus on IRC and at Debian. And this is me. Uh, I want to know a little bit about you guys, I guess. Can I get a mic runner? Uh, like, for you folks, are, can I just get some introductions as to why you came to this talk, uh, or your relationship to the Debian mentors list? Someone give me a hand. I know who I am. He knows who he is. Great. I wouldn't go so far as to say I know who I am, <laughs> but I'm actually organizing a sponsor's buff tomorrow at 5, so I'm trying to think what to minimize overlap or mm. somehow. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'll be there. Right. So, so you asked why I'm here, so I'm sorry it's a boring answer, but I'm here to make sure that our two things go together well. Cool. Anyone else? Like, yeah. Hi, I'm Eric Zini from Front Desk, and uh, I think mentors is a very important part of joining Debian, and so yeah, I'm happy to be here. Cool. Yee. I'm uh, Jimmy Kaplowitz, and um, uh, enough of my, um, I, I know enough people who write software that they may want to get into Debian, and I'm trying to just get a sense of the current and desired future state of Debian mentors to figure out a good way to maybe induce them to be involved directly. Cool. So I'll take a second to say what led me to begin this effort, in fact, where I came from in Debian in general. So. My history with Debian was that I started out by lurking on the Debian mentors list six years ago. Um, and I was really excited about Debian. I thought after a few years of uh, using, after like five, six years at that point of using Debian and, more, and some number of years of using Ubuntu, I thought I want to become a Debian developer. And I think now I can. So I made some packages. I emailed the Debian mentors mailing list. And I got some pretty helpful responses. Uh, one of my packages had a conflict that I hadn't declared with a different package, and somebody helped me with that. Nobody actually sponsored my package, but they did review it. Um, so I found people off list to help with that. Uh, and it wasn't, so I was sort of slowly getting involved. It took another year for me to find somebody who was consistently willing to sponsor my uploads and review my work. And, um, and I think that this process for me is a really important piece of the motivation of why I wanted to look at the way that Debian mentors lists work. It seems like a lot of the time, well, it seems like it doesn't always quite work. I had to sort of go outside it to find somebody. And when people, when people sponsored my packages, they didn't actually email the list back to say so. So uh, then a year ago, I ran this Birds of a Feather session, which I'm running again soon, called Debian for Shy People. And it was a general discussion of cultural problems in Debian and how we can get more contributions from people. And so Niels and I talked for a while after that, and we thought, what are we going to do? Well, maybe we can just fix the entire mentorship process as a whole, not just the mailing list, but connecting people and uh, getting people to communicate with people who want to review their work. And we decided that was a bit of a lot to do. So we thought we would just focus on the Debian mentors mailing list. So uh, then Niels uh, PM'd me a lot during July and August to try to follow up with me. And I ignored his PMs because I wasn't sure I had time to fix all of mentorship. And I wasn't even doing much sponsorship or review on the list at all. Um, and so I, I thought about what the problem was. And I realized that for me, uh, for me, I read the Debian mentors mailing list. And I saw things like this, where there's 
almost 300 mailing messages every month. That's good. That's a lot of activity. But 10% of those messages are unanswered threads. They're messages where someone says, I did this great work for Debian. I tried my best. Here it is. Would anyone even take a look? And if it's good, maybe upload it into Debian. And about one of these messages a day comes through that nobody ever responds to. And for me, that was a big problem. Because it wasn't just that I... I wasn't just unhappy that we were failing the new contributors and that Debian was slowing down in growth. I was thinking more about how those people are trying their best and we're just ignoring them. And that's... When you think about one person a day, practically, showing up, having done work for Debian, and then us saying nothing, that just made me feel so bad times 28 people a month. So I didn't even want to do package review on the Debian mentors list because it's a, such a sad place. And in addition, in addition, I know that if I just do one or two or three extra reviews a month, it's not going to have a huge impact in this 28 unreviewed, mail, unreviewed RFSs per month. So I sent an email to the Debian mentors list explaining what I just told you. And I figured that, Niels and I discussed this, and we figured that even if we just reply to people, even if we just reply saying, sorry, nobody answered your mail, but it's not because we don't care about you, it's just because we're all busy, that would probably be nicer than hearing nothing. And so we set ourselves this goal that we would do that within four days, that every message would get a reply within four days. Who know, who cares what the content of the reply is? Hopefully it's a review. But if it's not, at least we're not leaving people on the floor. So that's what we set out to do. And we got some positive responses on the mailing list. Uh, David D. Lowe is somebody who on the Debian mentors list, he only, he submits a package once, and if he hopes there's a reviewer, and if not, he just waits until there's a new upstream release, at which point he submits another package, hoping to get review. Other people have figured out that you can submit packages multiple times. So on the list, you often see the second try, third try thing. But there's categories of people like David that just don't do that. Um, and so we're missing out on their contribution to Debian. There were some enthusiastic responses, like this one by Holger, which basically says, go ahead. <laughs> uh, what, the way that we structured this was that Niels and I said that we were going to set this goal for ourselves. We hope we'll succeed. And if you want to help out, that's cool. But this is really about us working on the list. We're not saying, everybody, you must reply within four days. And there were some other mails that suggested that the problem was real. This person is now a DM. Uh, but at that point, he suffered the same. He was one of the people I was rightfully worried about, I guess. So one question you might have at this point is how we came up, how we came up with this number of four days. And it's just sort of the average between two things that seem too small and too large. To expect a reply in one day seems too fast. To expect or to get here nothing for a week seems like too long. So four. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'll tell you now that it worked. And then I'll tell you in about five minutes how it, it didn't work. But uh, there is some, we saw some really good progress. So during November, the number of unanswered messages was less than 1%, which is a big change from 10%. And crucially, it's only four over the whole month. And this is especially remarkable because I actually didn't do any review during November, even though I said that I would. Sorry, Niels. <laughs> uh, leave, leaving Niels holding the bag, but also other people picked up from the hopeful enthusiasm that we set on the list. There were lots of other people doing reviews. Uh, and there always are lots of other people doing reviews, but it just seemed like there's more reason to, to be realistically hopeful if you submit a package. And so the number of messages also doubled. And that stayed, through, that stayed true through December, basically. So about 2% of the messages went unanswered, and much fewer than one per day. And so I like to use this slide when I talk about this publicly outside of DevConf. Of course, we're being videoed, so it's all over now. Um, but yeah, so we doubled the number of messages, and unanswered threads went down 90%. Like, success, right? And so I gave this talk at the Python conference and talked about how great this worked. And somebody actually left a comment on the video saying that he really appreciated 
my work doing this. And this is actually the person who left, who left a positive note in the beginning, I realized recently. Um, and, you know, it really did work. The, we got more package review, and we, like, I, I don't have a good way of tracking. I would really like to know if more people during those successful months have become DMs and DDs than on an average month, because sort of that's the real metric of progress, not just how many packages get reviewed. Um, but the other thing is that a lot of other people on the mailing list showed up with their own ideas about how to improve the Debian mentors culture. And that was a good thing. And the other thing is I actually did eventually, by December, start doing more package review. So crucially for me, I solved the problem for myself. Like, I was scared of this list, and now I wasn't anymore. So there were a bunch of naysayers on the mailing list. Um, some people talked about how the, the re, well, PABs in particular said that we need more people willing to do review. We can't just solve the surface level problem of people being s scared of the mailing list. Um, Michael Tauschnig, I think is how you pronounce his name, talked about how we need to get, we, we can use the Debian uh, mentees themselves as reviewers. And that was a really good strategy and it's actually worked really well. He's been apparently, the one, there's been this huge surge in review traffic recently on the list and that's from his mentees. Um, but I do want to cover some of the ways in which I failed. So the, I talked about how great it was that we decreased unanswered threads by 90%, but by December, it was going pretty well. By January, it's back up to almost one per day. And actually, in February, it's even worse than it was in September. 40 unanswered messages. Um, we got more traffic, but somehow, lots of unanswered mail still. And yeah, that continues through March. Um, I think that the big reason that, we, that this, we lost the momentum that we gained was that, well, there were two. One is that we stopped saying we would succeed, and the other is that we didn't actually succeed. I think that if we had, if we set ourselves this four days goal again and tried to, and hold ourselves to it and announce it and maybe, maybe make it part of the fact that you should ping the list again when your mails don't get an answer in four days and mentors, you should make sure that people get an answer in four days. I think we can go back to the November and December figures. So the, that's how we failed. The things that I learned was that what I sort of already knew years ago, but I forgot, a lot of sponsorship happens off the list. So a lot of the reason I'm worrying about these contributors whose mails don't get replied to is that for a handful of them, they get reviews off list, they get uploads off list, and nobody tells the list, which is great for that mentee and great for that sponsor and great for, the, for Debian as a whole, except it's bad for me because I look at the list and I worry about all the people not getting answers to their mails. The other thing is that it did, in fact, take a little more effort than I thought. Um, I mean, surely when I put in no effort during November, that was bad. But uh, the other thing is that we set up a script to, Niels wrote a script, I think, to monitor which threads had not been responded to yet and the number of days that they had been waiting. And um, then I deployed the script, but then I failed to maintain it properly, so it kept showing results from the, from the previous month. Um, and so that's the kind of thing where it would be nicer to have concerted effort and maybe more of a team. So, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah. So that's sort of all I have for you in terms of how that went. I can talk more about, I can talk more outside of the slides about where I got the idea to just run this, but I think that's pretty clear at this point. Uh, what I really want to do, I hope, and maybe I can get a few more people involved in this in the next few days here at DevConf, is to create some sort of team of people who want to maybe trade off, making sure that people get answers to these mails, so that it's not just Niels and me holding the line, but maybe it's Niels and me for two weeks, and then it's two other people for two different weeks. Um, so I think I want to end here and ask if any of you have questions or if you want to change other parts of the culture or if you want to help me. So thank you. Well, um, first, 
thank you for your effort. I mean, that's really appreciated, I think. Um, I personally have problems with the Debian mentors, ma mailing list because uh, it has too high traffic. I mean, it's more than 15 to 20 mails to read a day, <laughs> and that's, I think, something like 8 to 10 packages that have to be reviewed every day, so it's, it's huge. And I, I wonder ab about the idea of refactoring the whole mentoring process, because you said that when someone comes to the Debian mentors mailing list with a package and with some work, that's work for Debian. But I wonder and, and if that's really work for Debian. We all know that having more leave packages that are only maintained by one person for personal reasons doesn't help Debian much. So I wonder if we should not refactor the mentoring process to, to also have people avoid making work for nothing. So, because uh, if we know from the start that, well, packaging this is not useful any, in any case, or you should do this in a team uh, in which you can get sponsorship uh, for your package, that helps much even before the, the work on the package has started. And the problem of the Debian Mentors ma mailing list is that you get the work once it's almost completely done. And this filtering process and directing people to teams and maybe just tell them, well, you should not package this or something more pol polite, <laughs> yeah. um, and this work happens off list or doesn't happen. So I mean, I mean, I think we should fix that. Well, I guess I don't want to totally steal from your boff. Um, so you should certainly bring that up tomorrow at the uh, Debian Mentors boff. But just talk. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Just, just to uh, know a little more. Um, ap approximately, how many, uh, how many okay answers per month uh, uh, did you had to do um, in the golden days of November and December? <laughs> so d just to evaluate how okay how how much load the, this uh, project put on you? Like between two and five emails a month or something, maybe a few more. But sorry, between two and ten okay. emails a month. And moreover, how many, um, I'm, I must uh, admit, I feel, I feel a bit guilty because I never help uh, the Debian mentors mailing list and maybe somehow, uh, someday I'll do. But uh, how many of the packages that, uh, uh, that uh, are, um, are, okay, that we have requests for so sponsorships for in Debian mentors mailing list could be, um, um, hem, okay moved to other specific mailing lists because in my opinion this is um an important issue too if yeah. we manage to to uh, okay separate the rfs by uh, category by team uh, work is uh, more efficient and finds more people interested into so uh, I'd, I'd like to know which which percentage in your opinion could um, could be optimized with this uh, idea Thank you. So I think, I think the question about the optimization is how, what percent of the list could you move to other lists, basically? Uh, at least 20%, probably more. You do an answer to that in particular? Uh, no. Okay, well then the other thing I wanted to say is that a lot of the, in the like 30 or total mails I sent in this four days effort, which, you know, I probably spent more time preparing for this talk than I did actually typing emails. It wasn't actually very much investment. It was more about the commitment. Um, the, a lot of those mails were sending people to other mailing lists. So what I find really surprising about, uh, well, what strikes me about Debian Mentors is that um, you, are, you need some kind of systematic process to avoid having some mail getting lost. And the way you implemented the um, uh, first day's limit basically is by distributing that process so that every reviewer look at the mails and hopes that it doesn't leave one go through. And I think that's the kind of stuff where we re you, you really need to move the process to somewhere else, like a website with a really nice workflow. So you can track who is responding to whom, uh, what's the status for each uh, package and so on. And I'm really surprised you didn't mention Expo because yeah. that's exactly what you are doing with uh, Expo Debian Net. And I think that moving most of the content of Debian's <laughs> mentors to that, to that website uh, would be, well, would really change uh, the way we deal with that. 
Yeah, I can you quickly should, show that. Maybe you should just talk about it for two minutes to give an idea of what people... Yeah, um, well, I'll quickly summarize what DevExpo is. It's a product that was created about three years ago in Summer of Code, and the Summer of Code project didn't quite finish successfully, but it's been sort of half revived. Well, the point of the Summer of Code project is to make a new code base for the mentors.debian.net website. So in the beautiful future, you'll be able to, uh, when you upload your source package, the Lintian output will be there on the web, and you can maybe do things like deb diffs between different revisions of the same package. Um, you, can leave, you can leave comments on the web, not just on the mailing list, which might help traffic be more relevant on the mailing list. Um, well, so basically, shortly after this effort, I started reviving the De Deb Expo, and we, it's ready for use now. Um, so I can quickly show it, but all it really is is a more, <clears throat> a more colorful version of the mentors.demi.net site. It does have a few new features, like you can leave comments on a package on the web, and the Lintian output is on the web, and there's a few other quality assurance checks. But the other exciting thing is that the code is actually maintainable. So it's really easy for people to add new quality assurance checks that are part of the package upload process. And we could, if we want to, move a lot of package review to that. And you could just leave comments on the web. We could even have the unpacked source tarball be viewable on the web so that you don't have to deget at all. You just, to review, you just read what's there. Um, I don't know if people want to alter the mentor's workflow that dramatically, but maybe they do. Uh, and the other thing we could do is, yeah, so anyway, then, the, then we could actually use a mentor's mailing list for questions, not for requests for sponsorship, basically. So first of all, thanks a lot, because this kind of activities I find are really brilliant, brilliant. So as Enrico mentioned, sponsoring is often the first thing that someone encounters when he wants to work for Debian. So giving an experience which is not frustrating or which is not like, you know, you're doing stuff that nobody wants, it's very, very important for us. That said, to change the culture, you essentially seem to have been doing, the, up to now, the part which is visible to applicants, which is of course the first part because you have already given the experience to them that in four days someone will, will reply to them and someone will you know, let them know that their work is not being ignored. But then you need a second part. So right now, as you said, you have done that only in two person and you need to scale because otherwise right. we will be back at the same problem I know, one year from now. And what you have been doing, in some sense, reminded me of the Usenet days where you know, you, news groups used to you know, set their own FAQ, which were for all the participants. So I've seen you have an FAQ on, for Debian Mentors. At least it's mentioned on the website, on the mailing list page. But it seems it's mostly oriented toward um, you know, applicants and not toward mentors. So maybe what you need to do is actually you know, generalize this FAQ saying, mm. OK, if you want to be a good citizen on Debian mentors list, uh, well, you are every now and then, please keep track of those mails so that all together we make it, you know, we, we collaborate and we make the process less painful, painful for everybody, including mentors. Just to make sure I understand, it sounds like what you're saying is that you're suggesting that we optimize the mentors fact to help mentors, not just mentees. Right. Not, not to mention, but In addition, yeah. Okay, a few questions from IRC. Uh, the first one is uh, regarding the stati uh, statistics you showed earlier. Um, the statics statistics were on answers to messages, not RFS uh, receiving review. Right. Uh, did that happen, or was the reduction in unanswered uh, RFCs just uh, through, sorry, I can't help you right now, but thanks anyway, messages? I think most, one of the things that Don Armstrong brought up in that thread was that in the initial four days thread where I proposed the idea with Niels was that it's important that we have a way to tell prospective packagers and mentors, it's good you did this work, but we don't actually want that package, which is kind of like what you were saying. Um, and so to actually answer the question from IRC, I think that most of those emails were some, it's hard to tell which, which ones, you know. In September, there were, what, 26 or so unanswered threads. And then in November, there were 
three or four or five or something. <clears throat> Which, so then there's like 120 threads. Which ones of those do I point at and say, these are the ones that my four days effort calls the reply to? Um, the very, very few of the total number of messages, though, were about us being too busy. Most of it was, I think, like, one or two or three were like that. Most of them were actually review or uh, saying, this, you, your, email, your email will be better off on this other list. OK. Uh, another question. Well, actually, it will be two questions baked into one. Uh, observing the current mentors culture, I see a large technical variance on requirements uh, sponsors require from, them, uh, from their sponsorees. Uh, and the time varying probability of getting sponsored. Uh, there is a chance a good package which shows up at the wrong time of not getting sponsored while others occasionally, perhaps of not so much a good quality, benefit from a mass flyby sponsoring, which uh, seems to happen every once in a while. Uh, how to address this problem to provide everyone the same chance? And uh, related to this, uh, there is a varying, uh, well, there are many sponsors and they all have uh, different standards on what they accept. Uh, for example, some sponsors require uh, DEP5 uh, format copyright files, while uh, others just uh, suggest it. Uh, is there perhaps a way to arrive at uh, something common? Well, you can uh, do like to answer. Days? You can use a second question to partially answer the first. So, if you just you know hypothetically, <clears throat> if you want the maximum chance of sponsorship, you should comply with the most stringent guidelines. Mostly, people are happy to sponsor DH seven or eight packages that like check all the boxes. Um, Step five, readable copyright, uh, clean lynch. I'm trying to remember what the other uncommon requirements are by sponsors. I don't think there's that much divergence in the requirements. It's just sort of how stringent are they, mostly. Is that, does anyone disagree? Is that a fair assessment? Um, the other thing about, well, you should have to move the mic this direction, but the other thing about getting a fair chance like you said, there's so many emails. I don't know. <laughs> uh, second and third try emails are probably the best way. So I think the idea of peer review is great. I mean, I, I think that's got to be part of the culture, or it will collapse. But and it is already. Uh, no, I mean not. I mean that that people submitting packages to be sponsored should also be yeah. helping with reviewing. But unfortunately. Um, it's not, it also adds, um, noise is not the right word, but it makes it harder for uh, mentees to know what are the real requirements and what are the things that other mentees are repeating, uh, that, you know, the, the sort of the rage of the newly converted. So, in fact, the advice from mentees mm -hmm. tends to be even stricter than, 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 than I would give myself. So, yeah. you know. They tend to interpret every suggestion as a uh, policy must. And so, so I mean, I, I don't know what the right answer is, but, it, it, but it's part of what's going on here, it, the, the, the feeling of, you know, a, a plethora of requirements that, that mentees are seeing. So I can give you an, uh, let me tell you about how a different project handles this in a way that Debian probably will never accept, <clears throat> but it works pretty well for them. So Memo, Mimo, Memo, uh, they have an extras repository, and in that repository, anyone can submit packages. Your, um, they have a review process, though, like, sort of like what we do. Um, theirs, though, is very clear. So when you submit a package, there are some clear rules as to when it will migrate into the actual extras repository uh, and out of the staging ground. Those rules are it has to have been there for 10 days, it has to have a karma of 10 or higher. And a karma means, a karma is a review of somebody, a user actually, trying the program, trying to install the deb, uh, running the program, making sure the program actually works. And that's not a package quality, quality required check so much as it is as a 
Well, it's not about the details of the package quality so much as that the package at least works. Um, and you have to get at least 10 upvotes to meet that jump. And the other is that you have to have three people who are actually on the QA team of MIMO Extras to give you a plus one. So the, I met the, one of the people who's involved in MIMO in, in October, and he was super enthusiastic about this really clear mechanism. And of course, we have nothing like that. Um, so yeah, obviously we should just say, if your package has been on mentors.dummy.net for 10 days, and it's had 10 positive votes, and at least three developers say, this seems OK, it should automatically move into unstable, right? Maybe not. <laughs> so um, the Debian Mentors mailing list is, is really for review of packages, packaging, or is it better done elsewhere? I mean, the mailing list doesn't seem like a great place for coordinating reviews in an efficient manner. I mean, if I was going to review a package, it might take me a day or two. And in that time, somebody else might be re reviewing it as well. Um, maybe it would be better if we were both reviewing different packages and we wanted some coordination between us. And is, does, is that sort of thing a problem? I don't really think so. I mean, sometimes people say, I'll review this, and then they review it in a day or two. Right. But what do you guys think? Sorry the latency is so high with the mic. So essentially, you're making a point of the risk of some race condition. But actually, if you have two concurrent reviews, it's not necessarily bad. Mm. I mean, you're right. You're right. I'm going to confuse the video team dramatically by, so is this mic also on? That is an ambient mic, just for uh, okay. ambient noise, and it only goes to the stream, not the speakers. Then I wonder if people can share my headset mic, and then we can have two simultaneous yeah. mic things. No, okay. We can move the mic around. But okay. The other question, in terms of your statistics, um, yeah. with, when uh, you were saying mails were unanswered, I assume that you cut off four days prior to the end of the month? I, I sort of eyeballed it. Like, I looked at the last blob of the month, and then I checked the following month and didn't count them if they had replies. OK. I just uh, took a look at the REVU tool from Ubuntu. Do we have some first-hand information about this? Because it just seems like uh, mentors.debian.net on steroids. I mean, uh, you, you can access an, an unpacked source version. You can have access to the DSC, the changes file. Uh, you can comment on, so, and you can mark the package as reviewed once, as advocated, etc. So I wonder if we could just, or additionally, adopt this tool for us or for our needs. Because uh, it just seems like uh, it's collaborative review, and you can add comments specifically on packages, on files, etc. So I wonder if we have some more information on the fact on if it's doable or not, and by whom. <laughs> Do any of you have first-hand information? Otherwise, I can relay second-hand information. In practice. I guess you may also. You may also have used review. No? OK. Right. Um, so. Review doesn't work very well in practice because in Ubuntu we don't have enough people reviewing stuff on review. And people, some people are very persistent and keep coming onto IRC saying, can you please review my package? And often it's a package that we really don't want in the archive. We, well, it might be okay in Debian, but there's, there's no particular reason to get it into Ubuntu where no one's ever going to maintain it in the future. So these packages go without review for years at a time, and it's probably pretty demotivating to everyone involved. On the other hand, if there's a package that does need to get into the Ubuntu archive, say it's something related to, um, it's an indicator or something Ubuntu specific, and the reviewer, I mean the mentoree can persuade a Ubuntu developer that this should get into the archive and that person will come back and repeatedly review it, then I think it works quite well because you can see all the history of the review, you can see that every sync change that was made and it's um, Ubuntu developers have a button they can press to advocate it, and it'll shield will appear saying this was advocated. So that, that echoes some, second, some things that I heard from other Ubuntu people earlier at the conference. And 
the, uh, the, one of the key things that they were telling me is that Ubuntu doesn't really want to keep using review for new sort of leaf packages uh, unless it's crucial to Ubuntu, yeah, like um, app indicator stuff. We've been talking about putting a banner on it saying, please don't use this unless you really need to. Yeah. Um, something else about it is because the comments on it are restricted to the website and aren't on a mailing list, you just don't notice when new packages appear unless you go looking for them. It might be really useful to bridge website comments with a mailing list somehow. So, um, so Deb Expo does about half of that. You can see it at expo.debian.net. Um, I can show you. It's going to be kind of wobbly. And let's see. One sec. And my blah. Very exciting. Pardon me. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Oh, unless I'm not very online. I hope so. And this is the part where my privacy later proxy settings slow me down. So I disable them. There. Yeah. Uh, the look is likely to change. Um, but the difference between this and mentors.demi.net in particular is that this is maintainable. So we can add features like that to it. Um, what I've wanted to do is bring this up to the point where we can deploy it to replace mentors.debian.net. Um, and it's basically at that point now I need to finish figuring out exactly what server it'll be on. Um, but after that point, I kind of want to step back and let other people mostly be patching it and deciding what features it should have. So if you, want, if you like writing Python and making web apps, then really, really we need help with this. And I'm also very willing to tell people exactly what lines to change or what part of the code to change, and I will deploy patches quickly. Um, just to look at a package, for example, uh, if Damon Keeper on IRC is watching, then hi. And also, thanks for your work on Expo, too. Um, this is his package. And you can see there's the linting output, at least. Um, and it does things like check the watch file to make sure that the newest version is the one we're using. And actually, in this case, there's a new upstream, so I imagine he'll be giving me a new package to upload soon. And you can leave comments. There's no state changing like the review app has for like when a developer marks it as advocating for the package. But of course, that would be easy to add. Was there anything else you wanted me to point out about this, Lucas? Anything else in particular to say about Expo or just to show it? Besides, it, look, it looks really promising. I don't have anything else to, <laughs> to say. Yeah. Lucas also proposed a feature, which I really hope somebody is willing to implement. And if you are, then I will find you. you well, why don't you talk about it? Which one were you going to talk about? Why don't you talk about both, then? OK. So the first thing that I'd like is um, Currently, we have uh, something like Debian mentors on one side and teams on the other side. And in most teams, uh, the reviewing process is suboptimal. means people uh, ask for sponsoring and then get, um, get forgotten, even on teams. And it would be nice if uh, actually team could, teams could use Expo uh, to manage their own sponsorship uh, queue. That is, if you could uh, propose a package on Expo and have uh, a box that says, OK, this package is uh, probably something that the, uh, the Ruby team could sponsor. And then the team could have a speci special expo view where all the package of interest to that team uh, would be listed. We could even do something crazy like have it automatically email the RFS to that team list. Do you yeah, think? Well, that would be fine. I mean, okay. uh, to get notified in some way. Or <laughs> and the other thing That's was the one that I wanted. That, that thing is awesome because that'll move a lot of traffic. Yeah. And the other things that I, uh, interested, I'm interested in on is um, uh, turning this into a kind of a social website where every user can review the package, get uh, karma points if they do good reviews and stuff like that, just to encourage uh, also non-DDs to do reviews and get the packages ranked higher because they are listed uh, as a more experienced, uh, more experienced packager and stuff like that. I think there's a huge potential uh, once we have a clean code base. And 
I guess in with regards to the Ubuntu experience, for review, it seems like you had this tool that did a bunch of the things that Lucas described, except for notifying teams. Um, but you still didn't, have, people didn't end up using the, the web tool to do package review. Is that because people don't like filling in web forms, or is it for some other, is it just because the packages are stupid leaf things that Ubuntu doesn't want? Yeah, uh, he just said that people were using review for review, but it was hard to know to come back again. Apparently, I have a minute for um, you all. Okay, one, one of the, the idea I had for, for the um, review process is that I'm not going to subscribe to the mentors main list because, as Alex said, way too much mail. But I'm willing to do a review now and then. So in spite of this dating website, uh, I saw that actually we could have some, some kind of automated mat match system that would match a package pending for review uh, and some GDs that works in similar fields. And yeah, and thanks, Enrico has shown, shown me a script that is doing that similarly for NM and I'm writing it right now. So probably I could have something to uh, have to expo that could automatically send emails to GD that could, would be interested in do, doing some reviewing, like being bugged, uh, bugged a little bit about it. That, that's one idea there to encourage the process. Yeah. While, walk the, while you walk the mic to Pabs, I hope you will, unless we're out of time. Um, you can imagine on Expo signing up to say, I'm willing to be randomly assigned one thing per week. And then it'll email you in particular. So, so Jeremy's idea was basically one of the reasons that Deb Expo was started, so we could add that sort of thing to mentors, which wasn't maintainable. Right, and Pabs is one of the people who has been working on Expo here and there, so thanks to him too. All right, thank you, Ashish. Thanks.